WrestleMania, aka Blu ray Mania, call me about 30. Well, guys, you've been wanting some reviews. So, i just been waiting to get this, this finished up. Um, and I finally did, and it's the 2013 uh, WWE pay per view. Um, just picked this up this morning, TLC 2013, um, like $12.96 at Walmart, I think. Um, actually a good show, just finished watching it, um, so I'll get to that, and, um, this was a <clears throat> up and down year for WWE, kind of, they had some really good high spots, and then they had some pretty bad low spots, but I guess that's kind of just part of it, towards the end of the year, it really started trickling off, I mean, they, they had some real good momentum going into, uh, SummerSlam, and, uh, SummerSlam was great, and then after that, it kind of trickled down, but we're just going to start from the very beginning pay-per-view, Go all the way to the end. Get your popcorn, baby. Woo! All right. Starting off, we've got the Royal Rumble 2013. Uh, this is the Blu-ray. Uh, can't. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if this had a pre-show match or not. I don't think that it did. Um, this show, to me, was a really solid, solid pay-per-view. Way better than this year's 2014 Royal Rumble, in my opinion. Um, of course, you got The Rock there on the cover. This show started off with the last man standing match for the World Heavyweight title. Uh, it was between Alberto Del Rio and Big Show. Um, and honestly, I've watched this match three or four times just because I've watched this pay-per-view several times. And that was a good match for, for who it was in the ring. Um, there was some pretty cool spots. You know, Big Show throwing Del Rio off that... Uh, thing up on the on the stage through the table, um, but I, I thought it was a good match. This is back when El, De, uh, Del Rio was a face, Big Show was a heel, and um, but I thought it was a really good match. Del, Del Rio, of course, getting the win there. Uh, I believe it was when he taped Big Show's feet to the ropes. It was the last man standing. So then you had um, tag team title match between. Uh, Team Hell No and the Team Road Scholars, which was a really solid match. Of course, this is back when Kane and Daniel Bryan were a tag team, uh, the tag team champions. And then you had the Road Scholars, which was Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow, of course, um, and which which turned out to be a fairly solid tag team match. I'd say I'd give it probably three and a half stars, maybe. Um, of course, Team Hell No keeping the belts there. Um, then you had the 30-man Royal Rumble match, and this was a very entertaining Rumble to me. I mean, you had some really cool spots. Um, you had the return of Chris Jericho. You had the Godfather coming back for a second and getting eliminated. You had um, you had a couple of really good, uh, really good returns there. And then of course Kofi Kingston did his really cool spots. And um, you know of course the, towards the end, you know it ended up being I believe Ryback and John Cena was the final two. Uh, and then of course Cena gets the win there and wins the Royal Rumble. But to me, it was a really solid Royal Rumble match. I know that. Um, Cody Rhodes was in there for a long time and did really well. Um, I'm trying to think of who else was in there for a, for a long time. Cena wasn't in there that long, of course. Uh, but, yeah, Cody Rhodes stands out to me the most. Of course, you had Gold Dust coming back, and that's kind of what started their, their situation there. But uh, then you had the WWE title match, which was CM Punk versus The Rock. You know, The Rock making his comeback in Survivor Series. Uh, no, not Survivor Series. Yeah, it was announced that he was coming back around that time. Just in time for WrestleMania um, season. And uh, him and CM Punk had an outstanding match. This was the match that um, the lights went out. When the lights went out, uh, you see Rock over by the announce table and he slammed through the table. The stipulation was that the Shield interfered in the match, CM Punk will lose the belt to Rock. Well, the lights went out. You knew it was the Shield, but... They didn't see nobody, you know, technically. So, CM Punk rolls Rock in the ring, gets the pin. Of course, Vince McMahon comes out there and is like, uh, you know, that's what it was not going to happen. So, they restart the match. Of course, the Rock gets the win there. I think he won on the people's elbow, if I'm not mistaken. I can't really remember. But, um, honestly, four-star match to me. One of the best matches of the year to me. Definitely in the top ten, which I'll be making a top ten list, too, of my favorite matches from 2013 pay-per-view. Um, but, yeah. It turned out to be a really solid way to end the Rumble, and I thought it was a really solid show, guys. I give this a four. 
Um, I'd probably give this a four star out of five star event. Or three and a half. We'll say three and a half out of five there. You know, the, the World Heavyweight title match was solid. The tag match was solid. The Rumble match was 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 above average to me. Um, and then, of course, the, you had the four at least four-star match at the end with Punk and Rock. So that was the Royal Rumble 2013. Next up, we've got the Blu-ray, uh, Best Buy exclusive of the Elimination Chamber 2013 there. Of course, now you got your new champion, The Rock. Um taking the belt from CM Punk, who held it for 434 days, as we all know. Um, this mat, this pay-per-view was way better the second time I watched it. Now, the first time around, I was like, eh. But that was when I really just first started getting back into wrestling. And um, it was about a month in, a little bit over a month. and It just wasn't the same. But I, I watched it again. I went back and watched all these a second time um, before I did the review. And um, pretty solid chamber. Um, in my eyes, better than, uh, I don't know about that. It wasn't better than last year's. You had Brodus Clay and Tensai versus Team Road Scholars and um, the pre-show match, tag match there. That was right around the time where they first started getting together, uh, Brodus Clay and, and um, Tensai, um, and formed a kind of a squad. But um, I went to the the Monday Night Raw the week, bef the Monday night before this, so that was awesome when it came to Nashville. But, uh, that match was was lame. I mean, it was a pre-show match. They had like seven minutes to do stuff, which I hate. But that's all you needed for this match. I mean, Cody and Goldust can only do so much. I mean, Cody and Sandow. Uh, so, yeah, I don't even really remember who won that match, to be honest. Then you had, I'm not sure of the order, because they don't write them in order on here anymore. You had... um. Another World Heavyweight title match between Alberto Del Rio and Big Show. This one, to me, wasn't near as good as um, as Royal Rumbles. Of course, you had Del Rio keeping the title there, but uh, that feud was kind of, it was all right. It had a cool little build at some points, but it was just, there's only so much you can do. And I hate Del Rio. I like Big Show, but he can't do much. So that match, I'd say maybe was a three out of five. Of course, you had Del Rio getting the win there. Sorry, guys, I'm sleeping still. Um, then you had Antonio Cesaro versus The Miz. I'm not sure if that was the match after that. I'm just going through what's on the back here. So, I'm not a fan of The Miz either, but th this match was just all right. They just don't give him enough time to really do anything. Um, you know, Cesaro, I believe he kept the title in. I can't remember if he did or if, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Next, we got Caitlin and Tamina Snuka, Divas title match. It was just all right. I wish Caitlyn was still around because her matches actually were entertaining. She held the belt there. Um, you had the Elimination Chamber match for the number one contender for the world title. You had Orton, Brian, Jericho, Henry, Kane, and Swagger. I would probably say this is one of the my least favorite Chamber matches just because it didn't get as rough as it normally does in the Chamber like it should have. They were kind of being like... Of the PG era or whatever, but just wasn't that many good spots in it as far as that goes. Um, and of course, you had Jack Swagger winning it, which, uh, wow. Well, but, um, but yeah, it was just an I'd say maybe it was a three out of five. Uh, not all that great. Then you had, um, you also had on this card, you had the six man tag match with Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus versus The Shield. This was a good, solid match, in my opinion. Really enjoyed that match. I'd say it was a three and a half out of five. Um, and it was just a good, solid match all around as well. Um, then you had, of course, Rock and CM Punk again for the title. This match, again, was not near as good as Royal Rumble's match. Um, it just wasn't. I mean, it just wasn't as, as solid. So the, the show kind of ended on a all right no, because like I said, that, that, that match wasn't bad. It just wasn't great to me. Um, and, of course, you had Rock keeping the title there. So, um, that ended this show off. I'd say overall, maybe, a, I'd say three out of five for the Elimination Chamber this year. Maybe three and a half. Uh, because the, the 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 World Heavyweight title match was was, was, was okay. But but your your main standout match on this one, to me, was the Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus versus The Shield. That was my favorite match on this one. So, that's your Elimination Chamber 2013. And, um... Now we're going to the Big Daddy, WrestleMania 29. 
It's the Blu-ray digibook type edition of it, which is cool. Of course, I went and saw this pay-per-view at my buddy's house, um, and then, of course, I bought it when it came out. I watched this three times, WrestleMania 29. Not near as solid as WrestleMania 28, guys, and, and, and at all. You know, WrestleMania 28, you had uh, you had Triple H and um, and Taker in that epic encounter. You had um, Cena and Rock again the first time, which was an epic match. But this this one, the build just wasn't as good for the other title matches or the other matches in general. Um, the pre-show match was Wade, Wade Barrett versus the Miz. Miz getting the win there with, for the IC belt. Via the figure four. It's right after Flair kind of passed in the torch. Um, I'd say two and a half stars. Just not. It's just so hard to have a good pre-show match when you don't have no time. They had like seven minutes. Um, Miz won it at WrestleMania. Then I think he lost it to Barrett like the Raw after maybe or something. But um, first match of the night, you had Orton, Sheamus, and Big Show versus The Shield. Really good way to start the show off, I thought. Um, of course, you had Orton, Sheamus, and Big Show, all three big egos. This is when Orton was a face, and not a sh and uh, Sheamus as well. Big Show was the heel, and they were trying to come together. This is when the Shield was just dominating everybody, and it was a really solid match. A lot of really cool spots at the end, towards you know, with all the finishers from all the people, and um, it basically ended up being Big Show <clears throat> got mad because they didn't tag him in, and he kind of just left them hanging to dry. Shield get the win there. Um, and then it ends up Orton and Sheamus and Big Show get into it. I think Big Show knocks both of them out. So, uh, but a really good solid way. I say three and a half stars out of five there for the first match. Um, next match, it goes completely downhill immediately. Ryback and Mark Henry. This match was god awful. Not as bad as their match they'd have later on in the year. But just bad. I mean, I like Mark Henry, but I don't like Ryback at all. And just imagine, if you haven't seen this match, how terrible it really was. Um, it wasn't like Goldberg, Brock Lesnar bad, but it wasn't, in it. I say two stars out of five. Um, and you ended up, Ryback tried to pick up Henry, and Henry fell on him, and then uh, got the win. But Ryback came back in and, and like, uh, uh, did his special move, I forgot the name of it. So, that match was just blah, you know. Um, then you had Team Hell No versus Zig and Big, or Ziggy and Biggie, uh, Biggie Langston's uh, Dolph Ziggler. This was Kane and Daniel Bryan defending their titles. Pretty solid tag match. You know, they were kind of, Ziggler and Biggie was, was, a, was a squad then. Um, this was before Biggie Langston stepped out in the limelight himself. Um, but I just loved their, them as a tag team. I'm a big Ziggler fan. This is when he was getting a push still. <clears throat> And they had a really solid match. Team Hell No kept the belts, of course. I'd say it was a three-and-a-half star match. Um, but a good solid match to make up for Ryback and Mark Henry. Then you had a waste, because Jericho made a return. And they put him against Fandango at WrestleMania. This is when Fandango just came into the WWE. And they had an all-right match. It wasn't bad. It, it wasn't bad. Jericho was rusty, though, you could tell. <clears throat> They had a pretty solid match. I'd say it was maybe a three out of five. It wasn't great, but it was it was okay. Um, Fand uh, Fandango getting the win because Jericho tried to go for the walls uh, or the lion tamer. I can't remember, and his knee gave out, and Fandango rolled him up. Got the uh, got the upset for his first win in his first match. I mean, that was cool, of Jericho, to put uh, Fandango over like that because he just made a return, you know, at Royal Rumble. Uh, but nevertheless, not really a great match. Then you had uh, Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger for the world title. I could not give two craps about this match. I hate both of the guys. I don't hate Swagger, but I don't like him. And I hate Del Rio. It was just very boring to me. I didn't care either way. Del Rio gets the win, but it, I, I mean, I guess it was a three out of five, but I didn't care for it. Um, next up, you had Undertaker versus CM Punk which was my favorite match on the card by far. One of my top five favorite matches of the year. Um, you know, could have been more epic, maybe, but they were both banged up at the time. And the fact that they put on a good, solid 20-minute match, both banged up, I give it four stars, man. You know, you had the spot where Punk jumped off the top ropes, didn't break the table because he didn't make the whole jump. He had a couple of botches in the ring when they were trying to go for their specials. But... Uh, but nevertheless, Taker gets the win, of course, going to 21 and 0. But a solid four-star match, best match of the card to me. And you had Triple H and Brock Lesnar in a no-holds-barred match. Um, 
I think, uh, yeah, I think that maybe, I think Triple H, there was some stipulation with Triple H. Oh, he must retire if he lost, which of course he didn't lose. Um, you know, they weren't going to let him, Brock won at SummerSlam, and uh, Triple H was going to win at Mania. And then, of course, Brock won again in Extreme Rules, but, uh, but yeah, pretty good match. I'd say a three, three and a half, maybe. There's some pretty cool spots. Of course, you know, Lesnar got knocked out in the middle of that match and was still fighting, so that was crazy. But some really cool spots with the ring steps and all that. So I'd say a three and a half out of five. Of course, Triple H getting the win there. Then you had the twice in a lifetime, Rock and Cena. I'd say maybe a three, three and a half, if that. Just because they, we already saw it at WrestleMania 28. The build was way better. It was a great match. This one wasn't near as good a comparison. But for some reason, they just felt like that's where they needed to go for the title. Overall, not a solid Mania. I'd say this was a three out of five stars as far as a full-on pay-per-view. And your Mania should be your best events of the cards of the years. Last year, 28 was awesome. 27 was bad. 26 was solid. But you know what I mean? So maybe this year, it's not looking like we're going to have a good one, but you never know. That was WrestleMania 29. So we're going for, we're on our fourth pay-per-view here. And we've got... Uh, they went back to the DVD for some reason. This didn't get a Blu-ray release. And that's Extreme Rules 2013. That of course had Triple H, Brock Lesnar um, as your uh, as your as your not your title match, but your main event there. This match, this show had eight matches. Um, I don't even. Oh, no, no, nine matches counting the pre-show match. Pre-show match you had Miz and Cody Rhodes, which was all right, but again, it was like five minutes long. Um, I don't even remember who got the win in that match. I think the Miz, but I'm not for sure. But it was all right for what it was. It was just they don't have any time to do anything. Um, so then we had Kofi Kings or no Chris Jericho versus Fandango again. Um, this match was better than WrestleMania's, to my recall, uh, to my recollection there, but. I'm trying to think. I don't have it written down who won. I'm trying to think. I think Jericho won that match. I'm not for sure, but I think he did. But it was a, it was a solid match. I'd give it like a three and a half. I just don't remember the end of it for some reason. But the, the match was was all right. Um, then you had Kofi Kingston versus Dean Ambrose U.S. title match. Um, this match was all right. You know, I'm a fan of Kofi and I'm a fan of Ambrose, but um, it wasn't nothing spectacular from either one of them. Sorry, guys, I'm fidgeting. But um, I'd, I'd give it like a 3 out of 5. They just don't take those matches seriously That, that as far as the build of them. There's no build, you know what I mean? Not really. Um, more of a build then than there is now for those belts especially. But um, it wasn't all that spectacular. Of course, Ambrose kept the belt. I don't remember if this was the count out. This may have been the count out one when he got counted out. I can't remember. But he kept the belt, of course. Uh, next up, you had Mark Henry and Sheamus in a strap match. Actually, actually enjoyed this one. Um, not a huge fan of strap matches. Not a fan of either one of these guys that that much. But I just for some reason enjoyed it. I I, I don't know. I thought it was all right. I thought it was solid. I'd give it a three out of five. Um, you know, of course, uh, Sheamus getting the win there. Um, I think it was through the Brogue kick or something. I can't remember. Next up, we have uh, Jack Swagger versus Alberto Del Rio again. I quit match. This one wasn't as terrible as the WrestleMania one, but again, I didn't care at all. Del Rio wins. He gets Swagger to uh, quit. This is the match when they uh, made it seem like uh, Zeb threw the towel in on Del Rio, which he didn't. And they went to the replay. All of a sudden, they're doing WWE replay now. And um, Del Rio gets the win. Um, next up, we had Team Hell No versus The Shield. In a tornado tag team that title match, this one was solid. You know, anytime you've got, um, you know, you got the tornado tag team deal, you ain't got to tag in. That's always fun. And these guys, you know, anytime Daniel Bryan and the Shield's involved, it's always good entertaining stuff. Um, you had the Shield win in that one, I believe. Wait a second. I don't remember who wins that one, guys. Pardon me. I didn't have it written down on this one. 
I just remember it being an entertaining match. I just can't remember the, the results. Um, next up, we had Big Show versus Randy Orton in an Extreme Rules match. I don't like it when these two face off. It's just whatever. Um, yeah, just whatever. I'd give that a 3 out of 5 again. Um, nothing spectacular there. Um, so moving up, the card's kind of going downhill after this. You know, the only bright spots have really been the tag match, maybe, with Shield and Team Hell No. Mark Henry and Sheamus' strap match was all right, but other, other than that, it's just not really a good start to the show. But they end very strongly. You had the last man standing match between John Cena and Ryback, and I did not think that these guys would be able to um, to have a match this well. But, dude, they showed out. They beat the crap out of each other. This is that awesome spot where they're at the top of the stage and Ryback barrels, you know, spears John Cena through it, and the match kind of ends. Then nobody was left standing because they both got hurt. Um, but awesome, awesome match. I'd give that a 4 out of 5, which is... Hard to believe you could give a John Cena Ryback match four out of five stars, but for this card, it was the best match on the card to me. Um, of course, you had not a winner there. Uh, then you had the steel cage match between Triple H and Brock Lesnar. This was a very, very, very good match. My favorite of the three that they had um, because this was a steel cage match for one. Two, there was just a really cool, the way they shot it. Anytime they shoot it in the steel cages, it looks so cool. The, like the way that they shoot with the cameras and the, the angles and stuff, they capture it a lot better. You know what I mean? Um, I guess because they have a certain amount of room to work with. Um, but this was when, you know, Lesnar, I don't know if he really hurt his knee or if it was just he was just acting like he was hurt for the match. But they played off that really well. You know, they had the whole sledgehammer deal. It was a, it was a really, really good match. And Lesnar getting the win over Triple H there. Now that there's no stipulation of him losing his job, of course, he gets the win. But um, really solid way to end the show out. I'd give this show like a three and a half out of five. Better than WrestleMania. Uh, better than Elimination Chamber, but not as good as Royal Rumble. But nevertheless, you know, three and a half out of five, in my opinion. And that was Extreme Rules 2013. Next up is a, is a pay-per-view that I was just thinking to myself, it's just not going to be any count. And it turned out to be one of my favorite pay-per-views of the entire year. And that was Payback. Um, I know it sounds crazy, and you're thinking, like, how does that, you know, how could that be one of your favorites? Uh, it just was. I mean, you had um, Kaylin and AJ Lee Divas title match, which they always had good matches when they when they had matches. Um, of course, AJ getting the win there, but I would say for a Divas match, three out of five. I mean, it was they always had good matches, even if they didn't have that long of time to work with. They still put on a good show. And again, Caitlyn sorely missed in our Divas division. Um, of course, AJ getting the win there. You had um, Kane and Dean Ambrose in the U.S. title match. Um, I know Dean Ambrose keeps the belt, but I'm trying to remember what happened. If this was the one when he got counted out, or if it was Kofi. There was something where there was like a something along those lines. I can't remember. Um, I don't remember anything special about this match, so I'll just kind of just move to the next one there. The one that started off the show, though, this isn't in order because I didn't write these down in order. You had the triple threat match for the Intercontinental title match, one of my top ten matches of the year, and it was Wade Barrett, Miz, and Curtis Axel. Um, well, I don't know if it's the top ten, maybe top fifteen. I, this is when I, this was Father's Day, and uh, Axel picked up the win um, and won the IC belt on, on you know Father's Day, which was really cool. I don't like Axel at all, but I thought that was cool. And he and he had a good match. You know, they were it was a lot of back and forth. Triple threat matches are always fun if they're done right. And um, it was one of those situations where at the end, Miz had Barrett getting ready to tap in the figure four. When he was laying down, you know, Miz was putting the figure four on him. Axel snuck in and pinned him. Got his shoulders down for the three and picked up the belt. So really smart, you know, smart job there by Curtis Axel getting the win. Solid four out of five stars, guys. A really good match. Um, then we had the WWE Tag Team title match between Orton and Bryan, Team RK No, versus The Shield, Rollins and Reigns. They were just trying to do any kind of combinations to get The Shield out of the, you know, out of the, the company. And it just wasn't working. I mean, she'll pick up the win in this one because Orton and Brian, you know, they can't coexist. 
which is just building their feud for later this year, of course. And something happened there with Brian hitting Orton or something. I, but Shield gets the win. It was a pretty solid match, though. I'd say three out of five there. Um, then you had an awesome match between CM Punk and Chris Jericho. Punk's hometown. Um, you know, so Jericho, even though he was a face, was the heel for that night. Outstanding match. These guys had such good matches together. Um, Punk, of course, getting the win. They weren't going to let Punk lose. It would have been a ride in Chicago. But awesome match. Four out of five stars for sure. Great match. Then you had Ziggler and Del Rio in the World Heavyweight title match. Another very, very good good match. And I'm not a fan of Del Rio. And it was brutal. This is the match when Del Rio was continuously kicking Dolph Ziggler in the head. Um, it was actually hard to watch, you know, because Ziggler was... I'm a big Ziggler fan. He's one of my favorites. And it just the amount of shots he took to the head, whether it be a kick or a punch or something... There's no wonder he keeps having concussions. I can't believe that they would even let that keep going on. Like that was it was too much, man. It was it reminded me of back when Foley and, and Rock fought, and Rock hit Foley like 18, 20 times with the chair in the head. This is kind of what it reminded me of. But it was a good match because Ziggler just wouldn't quit, and eventually it was just too much. Del Rio picked up the win, but easily four out of five stars, guys. Um, and then going, he had some good momentum going into the very last match, which I was thinking was going to be bad. It was your three stages of hell match for the title. You were Cena and Ryback. Stage one was a lumberjack match. Stage two was a tables match. Stage three was the ambulance match. Anytime you have three stages of hell, you automatically know it's going to go to all three stages. They're not going to bring an ambulance in there and not go to an ambulance. First stipulation was lumberjack match, and Ryback actually got the victory there so he goes one up on Cena they do the tables match which was even better um, the tables portion of the match that ended with Cena I think he AA'd right back on the table I believe getting the win there so it goes 1-1 going into the ambulance match they beat the crap out of each other they start taking apart the ambulance and beating each other with it and it ended with Cena AA and right back through the top of the ambulance but it was an awesome match guys another four star out of five so to me, you had three four-star matches. Actually, four. I had four four-star matches on this on this card. You had the Triple Threat IC title match. You had the Punk and Jericho. You had the Ziggler and Del Rio title match for the World Heavyweight. And the Ryback and Cena WWE title match. Just, out, I'd say four and a half out of five stars for this, uh, this pay-per-view for payback. I thought it was just really, really good. Even the Divas match was good. There wasn't a bad match on this card, guys. So if you haven't seen Payback, I definitely think it's the most underrated pay-per-view of all year. So that's Payback 2013. Next up, we've got my uh, my favorite pay-per-view of all, all, of all, all year. We had Money in the Bank 2013, guys. Just outstanding pay-per-view. By far my favorite. Um, you had the Money in the Bank kickoff match to start it off. You had tag title match between the Usos and uh, Shield Romans, uh, Romans, Romans, Roman Reigns and Rollins. Um, this match was awesome. They actually had like 12 minutes to work with. They uh, total, total great nonstop action back and forth. You actually thought that the that the Usos were going to get the belts there for a minute, but the Shield ended up coming up with the win at the end. But the best pre-show match of the year by far. One of my favorite matches of all, of, you know, of the year, top 15 probably. I thought it was awesome. Um, then you had Chris Jericho and Ryback. I'm not sure if that's the order that this was in. I'm just going by the back. I maybe a three out of five. I mean, I love Jericho, but Ryback just can't. No, he just can't get it done in my eyes. And he ended up getting the win in this match. Jericho just came back to lose all year, apparently. Um, so not a really good match there. But the, the one that started off the, the event, I believe, was the Money in the Bank World Heavyweight title contract one. It was awesome, guys. Awesome. Um, it was Ambrose, Fandango, Cesaro, Swagger, Sandow, Cody Rhodes, and Wade Barrett. I liked it better than the, than the, w, than the main event one. I just thought it was great. Some really cool spots, um, you know, with with Cesaro, with the real Americans trying to hold each other up to get the get the title contract. Um, 
Cody Rhodes was showing out. It definitely was the standout in that whole match. Just to have Sandow screw him at the, you know, screw him over at the end. Sandow gets the win. I think it was about 17, 18 minute match, but it was awesome, guys. Um, one of my favorite matches of the year as well. Um, four stars for sure out of that one. You had AJ and Caitlin in another Divas title match. That was another solid match between those two. I gave it a three, three and a half out of five. AJ, of course, getting the win there in that. And then there was that whole awkward moment with Caitlin like crying and stuff. It was bad. But a uh, solid match, though. Another solid match. Yeah, Curtis Axel in the, Miz, in the Miz IC title match. It was just whatever. I say two and a half out of five. Of course, Axel keeping the belt there. But uh, nothing special. Uh, yeah, Del Rio and Ziggler again for the World Heavyweight title match. Another awesome match between these two guys. Of course, Del Rio gets the win. But uh, Del Rio holds the belt. But they had really good matches together. I'll give that to Del Rio. That's Ziggler is such a good worker, though. He can make anybody look amazing. But uh, Del Rio gets the win there. But I'd say a three and a half out of five for sure. Um, and then you had your title match between John Cena and Mark Henry. Um. This match was all right. It was about as good as you think it could be between those two guys, and nothing special. Cena getting the win and got Mark Henry to tap out. You knew Mark Henry wasn't going to get the belt from him. I'd say three and a half out of five. Um, this is not the best pay-per-view match for match to me. Payback is. Um, or or SummerSlam. I'll get to that later. But as far as my favorite pay-per-view, this is, this is my favorite one because of the Money in the Bank matches. You ended the night off with an awesome WWE Money in the Bank ladder match, title contract, you know, for the title contract. You had RVD, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Christian, and Sheamus. Another outstanding match. This one ran about 24 minutes, I think. Um, I didn't have a clue who was going to get it. I really didn't. Um, RVD showed out. This is when he made his return. The crowd went nuts. He showed out, um, you know... You had um, the spot where Daniel Bryan knocked Sheamus off the ropes, and he, that's when he fell and mess, broke, you know, messed his shoulder up because he landed on those tables outside the ring or the ladders, I mean. Um, just awesome back and forth. You had D-Bry hitting some really cool spots. Of course, Orton getting the win at the very end. Um, you know, of course, because CM Punk got screwed over by Paul Heyman. That's kind of when Paul Heyman and Punk started their feud. But just an awesome, awesome Money in the Bank ladder match, guys. And just from those two ladder matches alone, and, um, you know, in the Del Rio Ziggler match, I'd say, you know, those were the three best matches. But the two Money in the Bank ladder matches were awesome. Um, so definitely four out of five stars for made for Money in the Bank 2013. I don't know if the Blu ray is as hard to find as it was, but I'm so glad to have it on Blu ray. Um, and that was Money in the Bank 2013. All right. You still asleep? Are you asleep? Are you still asleep? I hope you haven't been asleep. Next up, Whammy, the last Blu-ray release from the pay-per-view collection. I don't know why, but um, you had SummerSlam 2013, um, another awesome show. This had, oh, you had the um, kickoff match for this one was Dean Ambrose and RVD, which was a solid match. Um, of course, Ambrose keeping the title there. I don't remember if it was by DQ or by him getting the pinfall, I don't remember, but I just remember it was a solid match, but again, like eight, nine minutes maybe at the most is all they had to work with. Then you had the match, the, the show starting off with Kane and Bray Wyatt in the Ring of Fire match, that, you know, the Inferno match. Love this match, guys. This is when Bray Wyatt started on the scene as far as the wrestling goes uh, as Bray Wyatt. Just an awesome match, man. I love the whole Ring of Fire concept, and then you had the Wyatts trying to find a way to stop the flames from happening. They end up finding a, a loophole there, and uh, they end up getting the win. That's when they kidnapped Kane and all that. But a really awesome way to start the show off. Give it a three and a half out of five. Um, this is probably the <laughs> match for match. This one's probably the best, but my second favorite. I don't know. Top three. It's hard to decide, guys. Anyways, you had Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes in an outstanding match. These guys were giving it everything they had. Um, you know, this one they broke up. They were a tag team. Just had an awesome match. Um, 
Cody Rhodes got the win, I believe. Um, but none of the, it didn't really matter who won that match. They both won because the, the crowd was going nuts. It was an awesome match. Then you had another great match between Christian and Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight title. You know, this is when Christian made his comeback. Um, and they had an outstanding, outstanding match. I really did think Christian was going to win the belt. And, it, and they kept it with Del Rio. But Christian had so many close calls that, it, you know, that he was going to get get that belt. And it just didn't happen. But it was an awesome match. Then you had Natalia and Brie Bella. Nah, who cares? Why that? You know, I guess they put the RVD on the pre-show match to get some views for the app or whatever. But it should have been on here instead of that match. That match was garbage. Um, I don't even remember who won. I don't care. Two out of five. Next, you had one of my favorite matches of the entire year. You had, Dol uh, you had CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar in a no-DQ match. This match was incredible, man. Incredible match between those two. Uh... It was just great, you know, the, just the back and forth. The fact that CM Punk held on as long as he did was awesome. But it was a match that was, it won't be forgotten this year. It's definitely one of the best of the year. Um, then you had Dolph Ziggler and Caitlin versus Biggie Langston and AJ Lee. It was all right. Um, Biggie Langston and AJ get the win. But um, it was just all right. No, Ziggler and Caitlin get the win. I'm sorry, I'm tripping. Um, next up, you had John Cena and Daniel Bryan WWE title match. So good, man. That was the that's the feud that should have happened. It should have been Cena and Daniel Bryan for a couple of months instead of Cena and Orton because they had such better matches. Just an outstanding, outstanding match between these two. Um, Bryan gets the win. The place goes insane. Um, you know, went insane only to have Orton come down, cash in. Uh, Triple H hit the pedigree. You know, he was a special guest ref. He hit the pedigree on Daniel Bryan. Orton gets the win. Uh, and, yeah, that's how it ended. But this was by far the best match for match, the best pay-per-view of the year. Payback was was a close second. But this is this is an awesome pay-per-view, guys. I'd say four and a half out of five stars. I absolutely love SummerSlam this year. Um, and so, yeah, it was SummerSlam 2013. Now, these next... Five, I'm going to go through pretty quick, guys, because this is when it started trickling off. You had, in my opinion, the worst, probably the worst pay-per-view of the year. You had Night of Champions 2013. This is when Cena was hurt uh, with his elbow, and he was out. Um, and it was just, you could really tell. I mean, you had the first match, the pre-show match, was the primetime players, tons of funk, the Usos, 3MB, and Real Americans in a tag team turmoil match. Whoever won that match got the title shot at the actual show, which the primetime players won. It was like an 11-minute match. I'd say it was like a 3 out of 5, um, but not 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 bad. Then you had Kofi Kingston and Curtis Axel in the IC title match, which probably it was probably the best match on the card, as crazy as that sounds. That's how bad this was. Um, Axel keeps the win. It was like a 14-minute match. I'd say it was like a 3.5 out of 5. But, of course, Axel kept the belt there. Then you had AJ Lee, Natalia, Brie Bella, and Naomi in a four-way four -way match for the title. I'd say this was a one-and-a-half. This is the one with that awful spot where somehow one of the Divas is laying on their back in the ring, and a Diva falls on them and is pinning them, and the ref is just standing there, not counting. It, and even the, ref, even the announcers were like, what is the ref doing? Total botch. Um... Of course, AJ wins. It was awful. Yeah. But uh, moving on, you had Rob Van Dam and Ar uh, Del Rio in a world title match. Eh. It was all right. I'd say maybe three out of five. RVD gets the win uh, via DQ, so, you know, he kept the belt. But just kind of lame. Um, next, you had Miz and Fandango. Another terrible match. Miz got the win. It was like an eight-minute match that it wasted of your life. Um, one and a half stars, maybe. Then you had Paul Heyman and Curtis Axel versus CM Punk in a two-on-one no-DQ match. Um, it wasn't bad. I'd say maybe three out of five. Not not the best, but it was. it is what it was, I guess. Um, Heyman and Axel pick up the win there. Then you had Ambrose versus Ziggler in a U.S. title match. 
another three-star match maybe. Just didn't have enough time. Like nine minutes is all they gave them. Ambrose got the win. Then you had the primetime players in the Shield in a tag team title match, which I was really hoping was going to be a good 15-20 minute solid tag team match. It wasn't. It was seven minutes long. Shield won um, two and a half stars maybe. Just, just not enough time. Not giving them enough time. Then you had um, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton in the WWE title match. I'd say maybe three and a half stars. This is the one. Uh, that's the one when there was the fast count from the ref, Armstrong. Um, it's cool to see Daniel Bryan win the belt, but I knew it wasn't going to stay with him. But um, by far, I'd say like a two out of ten, a two out of five as far as pay per views go. This was this was bad. It's pretty bad when Curtis Axel has your match of the night, him and Kofi Kingston. But uh, it was not a champions 2013. Next up is another pretty pretty bad one. You had Battleground 2013. Um, we're going to get this one quick because this was another one that was not that good. You had Dolph Ziggler and Sandow in, in, a, in the pre-show match, which I'd say was a three-and-a-half star match. It was ten, they got like ten minutes, but they was a, it was a good ten minutes. Ziggler actually won. Maybe that's why I liked it. Um, then you had uh, Del Rio and RVD in a hardcore rules world title match. Actually, pretty good. They got pretty crazy, you know. Uh, you know, but uh, RVD went for the coast to coast deal, or the Van Daminator missed it, and that's how he lost. So Del Rio keeps the belt there. Seventeen minute match. You had the Real Americans versus Santino and Kali. By far, one of the worst matches of the entire year. One star, maybe. Um, the Real Americans win. It was just terrible. Just a waste of seven minutes. Then you had Curtis Axel versus R Truth. Again, just no build or nothing for the title. Two-star match, maybe. Axel wins, of course, but it's just nobody cares about that feud. You had AJ Lee and Brie Bella in a Divas title match. Two stars, maybe. AJ kept the belt six minutes long. It just wasn't nothing to it. Then, you had the Brotherhood, which was the Rhodes Brothers, versus the Shield. And if the Shield, they could have their jobs back if they get the win. Uh, you know, so... This match was one of the best matches of all, of all of the whole year. Definitely, definitely top ten in my opinion. Uh, just outstanding match, guys. Just real emotional, just real crazy back and forth. Um, the Rhodes Brothers are such an awesome tag team. Four and a half star match. It was like 13 minutes long. They ended up, you know, Brotherhood won, got their jobs back. Dusty Rhodes was at ringside. It was awesome. Then you had Bray Wyatt versus Kofi. Again, just a match with no point to it at all. Two stars, maybe. Bray Wyatt gets the win in eight minutes, 27 seconds. No big deal. You had CM Punk versus Ryback. I didn't care about this match at all. I think this is when Punk got the low blow and won or something stupid. Um, two stars, maybe. Then you had Orton and Daniel Bryan, WWE title match. 23 minutes long they gave him this time. Good three and a half star match. Um, it ended in a no contest. Um, it was the vacant WWE title match, if you remember. So uh, it's the one when Big Show came out, I believe. I don't remember, but it is another two out of five um, as far as the whole pay per view. Just not that good, guys. Really hurts not having seen it. Next up, we have Hell in a Cell 2013. Um, Better than the last two, but not again, not great. We're just going to get right into it. You had the kickoff match. It was Sandow and Kofi. All right. It was like six minutes long. It was like watching a Monday Night Raw match. Um, then you had Brotherhood versus The Shield versus The Usos. Triple threat tag team title match. Awesome match. Um, 15 minutes long, but it was really entertaining. Four stars for sure. Uh, Brotherhood get the win there, you know, for the tag titles. Um... Then you had Fandango and Summer Rae versus Kali and Natalia. The worst match of the year. Second worst match. I'll get to the next one. Horrible. Fandango, Fandango and them win, but who cares? It was just a waste of time. One star. Um, Biggie Langston versus Dean Ambrose, U.S. title match. Uh, Biggie won via count out. It just wasn't, it just wasn't that great. It was all right. It was just them trying to build Biggie Langston. So, you know, I'm a fan of Biggie Langston, too. So, um, 
You had CM Punk versus uh, Paul Heyman, Curtis Axel in a handicap Hell in a Cell match. Eh, three stars maybe. I just didn't like this feud at all. I just don't like Axel either. Punk wins, of course. Um, then you had the El Matadors versus the Real Americans. Another one-star match. It's really bad. Waste of time. No build. A Monday Night Raw feel to it. Matadors win in five minutes. Then you had Cena's return versus Alberto Del Rio in a good, solid 15-minute title match. I mean, it was three and a half stars to me. Good to see Cena back. The crowd was good. Was glad to see him back, and it was a solid match. Of course, he gets the belt. Um, then you had another AJ Brie Bella match that AJ won, kept the title, and nobody cared. It was like five minutes long. Then you had a solid title match between Cena, between Orton and Daniel Bryan in the Hell in a Cell. Um, Shawn Michaels was their guest referee. 21 minutes, 44 seconds. Orton gets the, picks up the win because Shawn Michaels super kicked him because he hit Triple H or some crap like that. But a four-star match, nevertheless. Um, this pay-per-view wasn't that great, but because of the, the title match and um, you know Cena's return, I give it a three out of five. So that was Hell in a Cell 2013. Next up, we have Survivor Series 2013. Another one that was pretty... Um, i going to just breeze through this one, guys, because I'm trying to keep this under an hour. Jesus. Um, had the kickoff match between Miz and Kofi. You know, because Miz just, for some reason, turned heel for no reason. Uh, they had an eight-minute match. Two stars, maybe. Just, uh, just no point. I don't understand. They... Whatever. Then you had S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Real Americans versus the Brotherhood, the Usos, and Rey Mysterio in a traditional Survivor Series style match. Outstanding match. Four stars. 23 minutes they gave him to work. Um, this is when Roman Reigns went ballistic and eliminated like three or four people. Um, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s team gets the win. You had Biggie Langston versus Curtis Axel in a Intercontinental title match. You know, of course, the Monday Night Raw before Survivor Series, I went to that because it was in Nashville. It was the Raw Country episode where he won the Intercontinental title, and it was awesome. Um, had another good solid match with Axel, but it was only six minutes long. Three, uh, two and a half stars, maybe. I'm just glad Biggie kept the belt. Then you had the worst match of the entire year. This is the one I wanted to tell you about. Total Divas versus True Divas in a Survivor Series style match. This match was terrible. 11 minutes of just wasted time. They should have made it. It was just terrible. It was terrible, guys. Um, then you had another terrible match between Mark Henry and Ryback. One and a half stars, maybe, just because Mark Henry came back. Uh, but it was a four minute forty eight, four minutes forty eight seconds match is all it lasted. Henry got the win. It was just so stupid. I just didn't understand it. Then you had Cena versus Alberto Del Rio in a another world title match, another rematch. Cena kept the win, of course. I'd give it a three and a half out of five. I mean, it was it was solid. It was a solid title match compared to the other matches on here. It was good, but it's still a, a three and a half maybe. Then you had Daniel Bryan, CM Punk versus the Whites in a tag team uh, tag team match. Uh, another three and a half star match. Sixteen minutes, seventeen minute match. Uh, Punk and Bryan get the win there, but it, it was a solid match. Then you had a. The worst main event of, all, of the entire year. You had Randy Orton and Big Show for the title. 11 minutes long is all the match lasted. Orton gets the win. It was like, why, it was just such a wasted motor, main event. It made no sense. It was ridiculous. Everybody knows how bad it was. But Survivor Series, I'd give it like a two and a half out of five. Um, so, yeah. So, WWE was kind of on the, on the downfall the last half of the year. But I watched this this morning. It was t uh, TLC 2013. Picked it up at my local Walmart there. And um, I gotta say, guys, they ended the year strong. I thought this. I thought this was a solid pay per view, actually. Um, you had the pre show match between Dolph Ziggler and Fandango. Maybe two stars, and this not near enough time for these guys. Fandango wins with the leg drop, but it should have. It could have been such a better match. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a good pre show match. But then you started off the show with CM Punk versus The Shield in a one-on-three. Love this match, guys. Four stars. Great way to start the match off. Start the show off. Um, Punk wins with the um, 
He moves out of the way, and, and Roman Reigns spears um, uh, Dean Ambrose. It was awesome. Um, Four-star match, really good match. And it sucks that CM Punk's gone. Next, you had Natalya and AJ Lee in a Divas title match. This was a really good match for the Divas. I mean, I three and a half stars. Um, just a really solid match. They both are the two best wrestlers they have. You can It's obvious. AJ won with the roll-up. Um, I think they were trying to get her in the sharpshooter, and she rolled her up and won. Then you had Sandow versus Biggie Langston in an Intercontinental title match. Um, I'd say three stars. Uh, you know, not bad, but not great. Um, Biggie wins the title with the big ending on Sandow. Hits the big ending on Sandow. Then you had an awesome match, guys. You had the Real Americans versus Mysterio and Show, Big Show versus Ryback and Axel versus the Brotherhood in a fatal four-way tag title match. This was awesome. Uh, Ryback-Axel, they got eliminated first. Then you had the Real Americans eliminated second, knocked it down to the Brotherhood and um, Big Show and Mysterio, which was awesome. Um, and then the Brotherhood won with the um, uh, Crossroads. He hit the Crossroads on Mysterio. But it was a really, really good match, guys. I really enjoyed that ta that title, you know, tag title match. Um, four stars in my eyes. Um, so the Brotherhood remained the champs, of course. Then you had another pointless match. You had Brodus Clay versus R Truth, but Brodus Clay came to the ring with Tensai. R Truth came to the ring with Xavier Woods. So why wasn't it just a tag match? Made no sense. Brodus Clay turned on the Funkadactyls and uh, Sweet Tea, and they left him. R-Truth wins with a roll-up. It was lame. Two stars. Um, then you had Kofi Kingston versus Miz in a no-DQ match. Um, two and a half stars, maybe. Kofi wins where Miz hits the, his head on the exposed turnbuckle. And then um, the next... Um, let's see. The next match, my bad. That was my brother. Um... You had Daniel Bryan versus the Whites in a one-on-three uh, match. wasn't near as good as the Punk Shield match, but it was still solid. Three and a half stars. The Whites actually went with the sister Abigail. That's when the whole abducting Daniel Bryan started happening. Um, but a solid one. Next, to end it off, you had John Cena versus Randy Orton in a TLC match for the WWE World Heavyweight title. One of the best matches of the year to me. I, I just thought it was awesome, guys. You had the huge build with the, the joining of the belts, and um, they had an outstanding match. They took, they held out all the stops. You know, you had the spot with Cena hanging from the belt. She had the spot where he ripped the ropes up, and um, and they, there was no interference. It was a clean win. Um, Orton got the win. It was awesome. Awesome match. Great way to end the entire year and pick up on um, on their on their. Dropping the ball, three pay-per-views in a row, four in a row, I'd say. But, um, but yeah, by far, guys, I would give this a three and a half out of five. Solid way to end the year. Um, and, yeah, that was your 2013 review. Um, just to give you an idea, my favorite, I'd say my top three pay-per-views. We're going to do top three and bottom three. Um, my top three would be Money in the Bank. SummerSlam and Payback. Those are my top three. Uh, my bottom three, that's a no-brainer. You would have number three, Survivor Series. No, number three, Battleground. Number th two, Survivor Series. And the worst pay-per-view of the year is definitely Night of Champions. So, um, that was it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you're still alive. 54 minutes later um, let's get off here I'm fixing to start trying to film my haul video so like comment and subscribe give me your uh, your, your tops and bottoms of the year pay-per-view wise um, before I leave uh, some of the best you know some of the best matches of course of the year I've already mentioned but if you want me to do a top 10 matches pay-per-view matches of 2013 let me know and I definitely will love peace and hair grease Woo.